everything was good. Like, it was easy, it was casual. That's what we both agreed on, to be honest, and that was fine. Um, and it really, things didn't start to change until I mentioned to him once, like, my last relationship was with a woman. And, like, ever since that moment, he got it into his head that he wanted a threesome. And every time he would DM me, or I guess he wasn't DMing, he was texting me at the time. Every time he would text me, he would start off asking, like, if I had, if I know anybody that would be interested in a threesome. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll see what I could do. I'll see if I can make this happen for you. And I guess the problem kind of started here. So he wanted me to get her to agree to this threesome without knowing that it was with him. And I understand that, but no woman, no kind of self-respecting woman is going to agree to a threesome when she doesn't know the details of it or when she doesn't know who it's with. So I'm, you know, I express concern about this. Like how am I going to get her to agree to something when she doesn't really know me that well, first of all? We're just, you know, we've DM'd a couple times. We're friendly, but she doesn't know me. We're not, I mean, we're not close. Uh, and I can't tell her who it's with. I can't tell her all of the details. So I expressed concern about this and he uh, he didn't like that I expressed concern about that. This whole argument and the passive aggressiveness just, just so bad. Just every single one and I ended up once again apologizing for everything and I misunderstood him and reading back on it I don't I don't think I did misunderstand him to be honest like no he, he was being the way he always was whenever he didn't get his way or things weren't going as fast or the way that he expected them to or I didn't act the way that he wanted me to but again I I did I I apologized to him I, I don't know um but yeah he, I apologized and he asked yeah, do, do you still want to come over? He wanted me to come over that night. And that night, I really, I didn't want to go over. I didn't feel that good, first of all. And then after that whole argument, I was crying. Um, and I felt even worse. So I just, I really didn't want to go over. This is an impromptu video because I am heated. So there's a girl named Sam Fisher who just posted like four videos to TikTok exposing Zayn. And she's a gorgeous girl. Um, I think she's just, you know, an, a regular girl that he saw on, on Instagram. And he hit her up in the DMs. And of course they start messing around. And so they're sleeping together. But when he finds out that she's bi, he loses his f***ing mind like a 14 year old so he basically starts fetishizing her and becomes super biphobic which is interesting because a lot of people speculate that Zayn is bi himself he just starts presuming that just because she's bi that means she's down for anything she's a freak he can get her to do anything with anybody basically and it's so disgusting and predatory and starts obsessively asking her to get a, like you're a celebrity you weirdo if you're not capable of getting a threesome on your own like what what even are you like what are you what are you doing he he's like pressuring this girl into finding a threesome partner and she's very clearly hesitant in the messages and she's clearly hesitant with the way she's responding to him and because she's hesitant 
he keeps giving her this fucking attitude and basically trying to bully her into doing it. You know, when something bring somebody brings something up and then they, clearly they want it. And then if you don't want to give it to them, they're like, oh, never mind, never mind. But then they have an attitude. So now if you're like a people pleaser, which this girl sounds like, if you're a people pleaser and you're faced with a narcissist, that is one of the worst combinations of couples. It, it leads to such abuse is so sad. So Zane seeks out these type of people. He preys on these type of people who will go along with his abuse cycles. And we see this pattern time and time again with him. This girl sadly fell for it because there's a, there's a clear power imbalance as far as him being famous, him being wealthy, him being well connected. So she probably feels she's in a position where she can't say no. Who wants a giant celebrity to be mad at them? Like that's such a, I don't envy that position because it's frustrating and he was confusing the shit out of her. He's so, he's so like, I don't even know how to describe him. He's so toxic. Like nothing he says makes sense. He says a bunch of weird shit. And then when she tries to address the things he's saying, he just gaslights his way out of it. Like, oh no, you misheard me. You misunderstood me. You're taking it wrong. All of this accusatory bullshit. He's constantly pointing the finger at her. And you guys have heard me say this time and time again. That's all Zayn does in this fucking music is point the finger at people and project when really he's the one doing the, he's the one doing the dirt. He's the serial cheater. He's the narcissistic abuser in all of his relationships. But in his songs, he's extremely accusatory. He even has like this song where he admits how fucking toxic he is. It's called Good Guy. And he says, I'm not a good guy, but I know you're mine. So Zane is very cognizant of the abuse he is inflicting on people. And he thinks it's cute and he thinks it's funny. And he loves that he can get away with it because his fans are so fucking naive and young. And so he's praying. I, I feel like he's in an abusive relationship with his fans even. He uses them to sell them stuff, but won't speak to them at any point between that. You don't hear shit from him unless he's trying to sell his fans something. And I think that's so horrible and toxic and what a manipulator he is. Because right before he put out his lead single, he puts out this pathetic message about his fans. And literally the day after, mind you, the day after I criticized him for not speaking to his fans until he's about to sell them something, the next day, oddly, he comes out and he writes this faux deep message to his fans about he owes his fans, he owes his life to his fans. What's happening right now, of course, which would naturally happen is that his deluded fans are trying to defend him and they're basically bullying her. People need to stop defending Zayn. And I've been saying that for years and I was called crazy and I was called a hater. I was called everything under the sun but a truth speaker. I peg Zane almost word for word what this girl is saying. And I've never met him before in my life. It's all based on logic and the available evidence and some other sources that I won't get into into this video. The girl, Sam Fisher, I feel so bad for her. She's so gorgeous and she probably was thriving before this toxic human being sauntered into her life. And what troubles me is that, you know, he's done this to other girls and you know, he's going to continue doing it to other girls unless he's exposed and the public really turns against him, which needs to happen. Twitter basically has this issue where they continuously um, victimize Zane, no matter what he's done, just because he's brown. He is an asshole. And this has been proven time and time again by multiple sources over the years. And I'm going to go through them meticulously in this video because there is so much proof out here that people don't realize every time something happens, they let some time pass and they're back to worshiping him just because he has an attractive face. He is an abusive, narcissistic creep. And I'm going to lay it all out for you in this video. This is inspired by Sam Fisher and her bravery because I had stopped talking about Zane. I was like a voice in the wilderness crying out, trying to tell people how toxic and abusive this man was. This is basically vindicating everything that I was saying about him, but I just really feel bad for her because of her experiences with him. They sound very scary. They sound very confusing. They sound very rattling and you know, they're going to stick with her for a while. This is what happens in abusive relationships, especially emotional abuse because people take for granted emotional abuse because it doesn't have physical scars. And so this poor girl is being intimidated by Zane, bullied by him, gaslit by him. He finds out she's bi. 
he starts pressuring her to be in a threesome with him she's hesitant and anytime she shows any kind of hesitancy or she find or she shows she's incompetent or not able to get it done he treats her so nastily and another thing abusers do is they try to confuse you and of course gaslight you so he's just constantly confusing her literally flip flopping the conversation like just so blatantly one day he'll say have you found somebody have you found some pussy for us yet which is so fucking disgusting and juvenile but he'll say like have you found some pussy for us yet and she'll say no this is why i haven't and he's like okay whatever never mind forget it it's just like it's just this endless exhausting nauseating conversation this back and forth and then when she brings it up like well this was for you he's like no it wasn't for me it's like what the fuck do you mean you're the one who asked for the threesome you did it's in writing and so even though it's in writing this is what abusers do they deny reality to make you feel crazy and she literally said at times she was feeling insane that's what gaslighting is is to make you feel crazy make you feel like you're the one in the wrong when literally nothing he's saying is coherent he's literally flip flopping the conversation back and forth and anytime there's a problem he's pinning it on her and the pattern emerged that i said emerged between harry and zane as well and you can see it in their music a pattern emerged where he is constantly berating her beating down on her and she's constantly apologizing and trying to appease him it's the exact same pattern and i ended up once again apologizing for everything and i misunderstood him and reading back on it i don't i don't think i did misunderstand him to be honest like no he, he was being the way he always was whenever he didn't get his way or things weren't going as fast or the way that he expected them to or i didn't act the way that he wanted me to and it's such a staunch pattern of his that you know Gigi has dealt with this too she's just not saying it for the sake of her daughter she's not saying it but i hope Gigi exposes him one day i don't really like Gigi or respect her because of her own issues i think she's pretty toxic too and i think she's an anti-semite but i know she experienced this awful stuff with him and for that for as much as that i hope she comes clean about it what i said in my matilda videos with harry is that zane needed to be exposed because what he's gonna do he's gonna do this to an unfamous person someone who is not as wealthy as him someone who doesn't have his resources or his connections and he's going to abuse a person in that position he's going to lord over them and probably ruin their lives because that's what abusers do they basically terrorize you and ruin your life and his form of abuse is so insidious but at times it's pretty blatant but for the most part emotional abuse is so insidious that most people trivialize it and they minimize it and they don't take it seriously because you don't have physical scars but that's not fair because actually you can contend that the scars from emotional abuse are far more far deeper and more traumatizing and far more traumatizing in the long run than physical scars because physical scars will eventually heal but what people are left with after their physical scars heal is emotional scarring so that's the same thing that a person in a emotionally abusive relationship would be dealing with that leftover psychological scarring so the playing field becomes level at that point once the physical bruises heal the person who was physically abused they're very emotionally abused as well so just because somebody wasn't physically abused doesn't mean they aren't psychologically scarred as well and so what this girl is describing is that she fell into this cycle sam fisher she fell into this cycle she fell for his abuse and she fell into a cycle of apologizing and ingratiating herself with him and appeasing him even his most outrageous demands he at one point asked her to find someone at her job to sleep with do you realize how predatory and weird that is it almost is is borderline human trafficking like her recruiting girls for him to fuck it's very fucking weird and it's very problematic this cannot be let go he cannot get away with this he needs to be stopped because god only knows what else he's doing to other people who aren't as strong and as brave as sam sam is so fucking brave because she has everything to lose going up against a celebrity like him whereas some of the celebrities he zane has abused they don't speak out and they have the power they have power on par with him 
But this girl, she's not a celebrity. She's not famous in any way. She stands to gain nothing from this because everyone is hating on her and abusing her right now. But I hope, I hope um, somehow, some way people reach out to her and send her love and tell her she did the right thing because she did. And it was extremely brave. And Zayn and his disgusting, toxic fans who enable his behavior need to be stopped. And a key person who can stop Zayn is Taryn. Taryn is his assistant or his manager now. She's been with him from the beginning. She knows exactly how toxic Zayn is. And she knows exactly how manic and insane Zayn is. She was in the room with him when he was screaming at Jake Paul, trying to calm him down and stop him. He's running around here acting tough with women. It's the weakest thing a man can fucking do. Men who beat on women and talk down to women and denigrate women and use women, it's like the weakest fucking thing you could possibly be. So Taryn is very aware of Zayn's mentality and how toxic he is and I feel really bad if she feels like she's stuck in a situation where she's afraid to leave him but she's very aware and she needs to do something the ball is in her court she's his manager now she needs to do something to rein this in she would be doing a fucking disservice to women everywhere if she helped to cover this situation up and if she's been helping to cover up other situations of a similar ilk so anyway there's only so much she can do but as his manager she can do a little bit more now he's probably doing this to so many girls and i think taryn has probably been helping to cover up his behavior so anyway i have a fuck ton more to say about zayn this video was really disorganized and tangential but i just had to get it out oh by the way so finally the girl found a threesome partner and she comes over jane's house with the girl and she gets a little tipsy because she's probably nervous and they start going at it and he tells her to leave because she wasn't getting she wasn't giving him enough attention apparently that's how egotistical he is and how much of an egomaniac he is and i've been saying this for years and i i feel very vindicated right now let's be honest it's probably going to be a case where it's going to be ignored and it's going to blow over or this loser is probably going to make some statement victimizing himself like he always does just like he did with the Yolanda Hadid situation. My only hope is that the public doesn't go for it anymore, that they don't fall for it anymore. It started with Perry. It happened with Gigi as well, as quiet as it's kept because she refuses to make him look bad in public because she has a vested interest in making Zayn look good because she had a child with him and she doesn't want things to look bad for her child, which I can understand and respect to an extent. But she still filed harassment charges against him in court because it had gotten that bad. And then even taking it all the way back to 2010, the first girl Zayn was in a public relationship with was Geneva Lane. And even she came out when the engagement ended with Perry even Geneva Lane came out and exposed this bastard and said he is an asshole. And in 2015, after Zayn left the band, first of all, in 2015, Zayn left the band abruptly in the middle of a tour, uncaring about the fans, uncaring about his bandmates. He left the band without saying goodbye. Liam came through and exposed Zayn as not having said goodbye to them when he left. These are people he worked with for five years. He dumped them all on a moment's notice to pursue self-serving interests. And so what happened when Zayn left the band is that his excuse was that he left for stress, but that's bullshit. Let's look at why that's bullshit. Zayn left the band in Hong Kong. And so before Hong Kong, they were in Bangkok, Thailand. A couple of things happened in Bangkok, Thailand that led up to Zayn leaving the band on the next tour stop. In Thailand, we have it documented by an eyewitness that Zayn and Harry had a falling out in Bangkok, in Thailand. And Harry was at a bar talking to a stranger, getting drunk and crying over Zane for some reason. Some of us know the reason, but we'll just say for undisclosed reasons, Harry was in a bar crying over Zane because they had fallen out. And he, he said this all to an author named Joe Cummings, who accidentally exposed it on Twitter 
and 2019 because he didn't realize it wasn't public knowledge. Also, what happened in Bangkok, Thailand is that Zayn was caught in yet another cheating scandal. Mind you, this is like Zayn's third cheating scandal by that point. He had one um, in like 2012 where he was caught on a phone call while he was with Perry. He was caught on a phone call setting up a booty call with some girl that he was telling to come into the hotel and bypass security by using the name Christabel Riley. You know when you come in the hotel, yeah? Yeah. Um, just walk straight in. Don't, don't get involved with the people outside because there's fans outside. You don't want to look like a fan. So yeah. walk straight in. No, listen, walk straight in. No, just listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Okay, go. Just, just stand outside, yeah? Okay. You don't want to look like a fan, yeah? So you just walk straight in. But you two just walk straight in, get in the lift. If they ask me who you are, you say your name's Christabel Riley. Christabel Riley? Yeah, that's your name. Okay. How far, how far away are you? 20 minutes. Yeah, it's raining and I can't see. All right, well, Harry's, Harry's, Harry's saying you have to be a bit quicker than that. All right. Uh -huh. All right, that's 15. 15 minutes, she's good. Tell Harry he's to keep Harry has to, if he wants booty, he has to wait, did you say? <laughs> Christabel Riley was actually the name of, I believe, either their hairstylist at the time or a makeup artist, someone of that nature. So she was a real person among their crew, but he used her name to give to girls to sneak them in past security to sleep with them while he was in a relationship with another girl at the time. So we cut from that to a bunch of rumors of Zayn and Harry hooking up with girls together. Then we cut from that to 2013. Zayn was exposed by a dancer. She was like a stripper or something. And normally I wouldn't lend too much credence to stories like this because you do have groupies who are obsessed and want attention. And so they'll say a celebrity did anything, but she provided photographic proof of him in bed and other pictures throughout his house. So clearly this dancer was at his house in bed with him. He's so stupid. He's laying there asleep. She's snapping photos of him and she exposed them afterwards. Sadly, Perry stuck with him. But this is what happens in those sort of abusive relationships. Anybody that is a serial cheater is an emotional abuser, period. There's no getting around it. There's no excusing it. That is emotional abuse. And so Perry was caught up in that narcissistic abuse cycle where she found it difficult to detach from him. Later that year, he was also cheating on her with someone else, which I won't mention in this video because it's just too much to go into. He got engaged to her later that year and he continued to cheat on her um, with a certain person that I'm not gonna mention. And then in 2015, he left the band abruptly, ditched all his bandmates, didn't even tell them goodbye, pretended publicly that he left for stress, when really he left because he got into a yet another cheating scandal and he also fell out with his bandmate Harry, which goes very deep. But then afterwards, he starts talking shit about the band and the music, just being an ungrateful dick. And so you start to see more and more of Zayn, the real Zayn, when he left the band. This extreme arrogance. He's so self-obsessed. He's constantly bigging himself up. If you go back through his Twitter, it's just atrocious. There's no humility. He's just arrogant. He's so bratty and snotty. It's disgusting. Throughout 2015, when he became a solo artist, he got into it with multiple people from like Tyler, the creator. Oh, to Naughty Boy, uh, the producer he left the band with to make music with. He comes back on insulting Naughty Boy in a manic rant on Twitter, accusing him of leaking his songs, but that was never proven. Naughty Boy denied it. And so you have Zayn just going ham on one of his closest friends, his so-called brother, 
on Twitter. So this will become a pattern of his that people just don't seem to pick up on. Zane grows close to people. He uses them for as long as he needs them and then he ditches them. He did it with Perry. He did it with uh, the boys in One Direction, the band itself. He did it with Naughty Boy. He even did it with Make You No know Love. He used them up and then he like unfollowed them and there was like a little bit of tension there. He had a falling out with his cousin Jawad, J Jawad, however you pronounce his name. He has a history of just like insulting people and getting into these weird altercations with people. So he posted something um, in like 2016 or 2015 that was insulting of Taylor Swift. And he would later go on to collab with her, basically use her as well. But he insulted her with this post he made and her boyfriend at the time i believe his name was calvin harris ha had to come on and defend her and they got into a spat so that was another public feud zane had and so you begin to see this weird pattern after he left the band of this really extreme like mon almost maniacal behavior and so a lot of it his fans tend to ignore and when i was a fan of him i tended i i saw it but i kind of made excuses for it and that's what people get caught up in doing when they're a fan of him is making excuses for his horrendous behavior because you're supposed to be under this notion that oh zane is a victim and it's like oh why is he a victim oh because he experienced racism at one point it's like oh fucking k that doesn't mean he's a perpetual victim who can do no wrong it's just a long track record of him being a piece of shit. this went on for years uh these little weird uh, spats coming up or people exposing him he was also exposed by two reporters that nobody paid much attention to billboard uh did a cover story with him and what he likes to do because he's so unprofessional and arrogant and bratty he likes to waste these reporters time and then he ditches them without another word and it's extremely unprofessional and they this billboard reporter mentioned he left the building and never came back to the interview completely ditched this man highly unprofessional then in 2018 he had a gq cover story at the end of the cover story the journalist mentioned that zane completely ditched her and had no more communication with her and the story wasn't complete and she actually went out of her way to say it was really unprofessional and tacky of him and his fans of course attacked her and defended him and i remember arguing with his fans at the time like feeling like i was in the twilight zone like how can you possibly be defending or excusing this behavior he is a nasty human being he's very unprofessional so it just went on from there it just kept going and i just kept being demonized for calling zane out on certain things and so in 2018 this was another hint and a half zane's own management team dropped him they dropped him because that's how unprofessional and difficult he was to work with so stara stennett of I believe it was first entertainment management she was with him when he first came out of the band because you know he thought he was hot shit coming out of the band another reason it was bullshit that he left for stress because he's so dumb he finally put his foot in his mouth he just told us this year i saw a clip of him on call her daddy and he said he left the band because it was calculated he wanted to be the first person to release music it was selfish i'm like that's completely maniacal a sane person wouldn't admit that and a sane person wouldn't do that. Basically, he just admitted in that interview to deceiving the world and pretending to be some little victim that was leaving the van because of stress. Now seeing the way Zayn is, it makes perfect sense to me why they rejected his songs. Imagine how much of a nightmare he must have been behind the scenes in the band. For them to reject all of his songs with Naughty Boy, he had to be doing some weird shit behind the scenes or probably demanding some weird shit for them to reject all of his songs for that final album. So I no longer see Zayn as a victim whatsoever. He's an abuser. He's a narcissistic abuser and he deserves the criticism and scrutiny he's received over the years because he has been a nightmare for so many people. Again, he left the band, didn't say goodbye to his bandmates, fell out with Harry, was in another cheating scandal. And then after he signed a new record deal in 2015, after leaving the band, he dumped Perry. He dumped her. He kicked her out of their house. He left and moved to LA. She said she was left homeless and that he dumped her by text. And he's such a bitch. It's so easy to see that he dumped her by a text. That's not difficult to believe. This is all over the place because I'm a little heated, but um, the timeline is basically he's been a dick all along from the beginning, from day one. Even his first girlfriend admits it. So in 2018, back to 2018, after he ditched a GQ journalist and got called unprofessional, after his management dumped him in late 2018 
his album was supposed to come out, but he completely ruined the rollout for his album, Icarus Falls. He released the lead single in April. He refuses to promote his work. And this is another reason people victimize him. Oh, he has anxiety. Okay, it's tons of artists out here who have anxiety, who work through it and do what they're supposed to do and are still professional. Even if he can't perform live, because sometimes that's just not something people can get over and you can't force them to get over, that's something to sympathize with. But being an arrogant dick to the point where you're not meeting professional obligations or contractual obligations, where this label has shelled out millions to you in advance for your record sales, and now you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you're not meeting contractual obligations, they don't have to hold your fucking hand, and they've given you millions of dollars, they've invested millions of dollars into you based on what you said you were going to do in this contract. Now you're not holding up contractual obligations. And so you're having issues with your label to the point where your management drops you because you are so difficult to work with. And then on top of that, you come on Twitter and admit to the world that you're having issues with your label because you're so stupid. You don't see that you're exposing yourself. So, so far we have Zayn falling out with literally everyone he has come in contact with. He's just a very toxic, narcissistic, arrogant, abusive type of person. And I felt really bad for him for a long time until it got to the point where I understood the damage he inflicted on another person I care about. And that's when I stopped feeling sympathy for him. Cut to Gigi. So he's dating Gigi off and on. Their relationship is infamous for being toxic and off and on. They've had a couple of breakups. In 2019, I believe he had like this crazy rant on Twitter, just a very profane rant where he's just cursing, calling people dumb, all this sick shit. I'm going to put the screenshot up here. So people suspected at the time that this was about Gigi because you know what? Gigi, he and Gigi were broken up and Gigi had started dating a guy or Gigi was rumored to be dating a guy that she wasn't even dating. It was just a male friend that she was seen with. And he's so insane and arrogant and so egotistical. He can't take it anytime Gigi is seen with a new person. So in 2019, Gigi was seen on the street with a guy and he went on Twitter and went crazy and started talking really crazy. And so Gigi had to make a statement saying she wasn't dating the guy to get this weirdo to back down. And then she ended up dating uh, Tyler, Tyler, whatever, Cameron or whatever, some reality TV star. He and Gigi got back together and it seemed really rushed. And then they got pregnant really fast. 
and it seemed really weird. There was an ulterior motive there. It's so obvious, but I won't talk about it. In 2020, they were together doing this pathetic pandemic thing together, flaunting their relationship, yada yada. Now, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but I want to go back to one fallout Zayn had with a person who nobody, of course, wants to take seriously. But this but this incident with this person was so telling about who Zayn really is and what's wrong with Zayn. He had a run in with Jake Paul in 2020, early 2020. It was in Vegas. He had this crazy run in with Jake Paul where Jake Paul came on Twitter and said, I almost had to clap Zayn up because he was he was very rude, nasty to me for no reason. He basically said he just said hi to him and Zayn kind of went off on him. And at the time, people found this difficult to believe. And so, because, oh, it didn't sound like Zane. But the problem with Zane is that he's a covert narcissist and he does all his dirt behind the scenes and he hides behind this guise of, oh, having anxiety and being quiet and being private. But that's bullshit because he's extremely toxic behind the scenes. And so Jake Paul exposed him that day. He exposed him so well that Gigi felt threatened and jumped on Twitter and went off on Jake in this very horrible, nasty way, calling Zayn a respectful king, which is just fucking laughable. And it's totally belied by Zayn's track record, mind you, leading up to that date. Zayn has a horrid track record. He is anything but a respectful king. Jake Paul exposed him, but we didn't know the extent to which Jake Paul would expose Zane. A few days later, Jake Paul's brother Logan did a podcast. And in that podcast, he released a video Jake took of the incident. So what people get very wrong about this incident is they think that Jake stalked Zane to his room and was harassing him. Like Jake Paul isn't a millionaire and a celebrity himself. Like he just stalks other people for the hell of it. Because of Jake's history being like a prankster, he was seen as the bad guy in the situation at the time. And I kept telling people that this doesn't sound right to me. I like Jake Paul, believe it or not, he's not that bad of a guy. He's just misunderstood. And I said the same thing about Zane for a while. I'm like, Zane is just misunderstood. There's a major difference between Jake Paul and um, Zane. With Jake Paul, what you see is what you get with Jake Paul. You know exactly what he is. Everything is out in the open about Jake Paul. He's been exposed. He's been talked about. He's been bullied, whatever. Everything that Zane does is behind the scenes. And the people that speak out against him are bullied into silence. It has happened time and time again this incident got so bad when logan released that video because then it's like oh you you're recording him and all this bullshit but it's like no this video is exposing how fucking manic zane is he's screaming at the top of his lungs and so he's talking all this mad shit and what people don't understand about that video is that jake paul took that video from inside of his own room jake paul's room was across the hall from zane he didn't follow Zane to his room. He was staying across the hall from him. And so that's how he even encountered him to begin with. Hear him screaming. Yo, facts. My, my friend, my friend, my friend. Talk, talk to me for talk to me for one second. So bro, I, eventually I'm like, okay, I think I I think I'm gonna give up. He's 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 on one right now. I'm not sure I can uh, mend this situation. But then the girl opens the door, and Zane's in the background. He's still screaming. She's like, "Stop, stop, stop!" And she's like, she's like, she's like, uh, she's like, "Listen, you gotta go." I go I, before I do that. I want to apologize on behalf of me and my brother, especially. If there's any beef here, I'd love to squash it. If I, I could talk to Zane for one second, so he doesn't go to bed upset and have a, a shitty night, I, that'd be awesome. Um, and she, she's like, it was, she screams at him. She's like, it was his brother. And she, she's like, we know, we know, we know. And then she shut the door. So Zane probably just doesn't like Jake, but that doesn't give you a right to be a complete dick to people. And we know Zane was a dick to Jake Paul because Zane has a history of being an outright dick to so many people for no reason. The baby came in September, 2020. And then, um, she did like a Vogue cover talking about the baby. And then in 2021, they apparently broke up again. In late 2021, this news drops that Zayn has struck Yolanda Hadid. This was incredible. This was a bombshell because for people like me, this is no surprise. We knew that the relationship between Zayn and the Hadids was really toxic because we had been tracking it for years and we knew there was something very off 
about his relationship with Gigi that hasn't come to light yet. But we knew it was a very toxic, volatile situation. And so that situation just kind of vindicated everybody who had been saying it, especially me. So the shit hit the fan. Yolanda claimed he struck her. This was never disproven, by the way. It was never proven, but it was never disproven. We can give him the benefit of the doubt on that because she has the burden of proof. She's making the claim fine. But as far as the harassment, he was actually charged with harassment and I believe he was arrested. And so she probably provided some proof for that or he knew she could provide the proof for that because he went to court and he pled no contest. And of course, in public, he tries to play it up like, oh, I'm such a private person and oh, I'm doing this for my daughter. I'm not gonna pursue the matter. No, you're doing this because you know she has some shit on you. And if you pursued it, she was gonna expose you and end you. What I hate about narcissists is when they have children because the way narcissists use their children is very, very despicable. They use their children as trophies. They use them for attention. They use them as human shields from criticism is really disgusting. And you see all of those patterns prevalent in the way Zane treats his daughter. When Gigi was pregnant, he didn't post a single thing about Gigi being pregnant or about his daughter. When she came, he decided to line up the birth of his daughter with the release of his lead single for his third album. So that tells you what kind of guy Zane is. And then when he was promoting different songs from that album, he did pap walks pushing a stroller. You haven't seen Zayn pushing a stroller in how long? Oh, because he didn't have music out for years. Then in 2023, when he's starting to drop music, he's about to drop another single. Suddenly Zayn has a daughter again. Suddenly he's talking about his daughter on Call Her Daddy. Suddenly he's posting about his daughter on Instagram, his daughter taking pictures of him on Instagram. And then he finally posts a birthday post to his daughter. She's like three years old. This is the first birthday post he's posted for her because he's releasing music. So obvious and transparent what he's doing. So anyway, back to 2021, the big blow up with Yolanda Hadid. It turns out he's harassing Gigi and Yolanda and said some really foul, vulgar things about his daughter and said some really foul, vulgar things to the guard that was present and to Yolanda and to Gigi on the phone, which is why he had three counts of harassment from all three of those people. But the way he speaks about his daughter in that rant is insane and basically is a commentary on how he feels about having a child. If you remember what he said, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's on probation for harassment but he also had to take domestic violence courses and anger management courses. Zane's track record speaks for itself. He's a deceiver, he's a manipulator, he's a serial cheater, he's an abuser. And so Perry exposed him in her song, Shout Out to My Ex, and in her uh, biography where she talked about how he left her homeless and dumped her by text. Gigi exposed him through her harassment, her court papers, and through the harassment charges, even though she tries to defend him at times. There's another person that you know, the world probably won't know about for a very long time. Sadly, it really fucking sucks because this person could nail Zane to the wall. I fucking wish they would. 